That's lit. Lit? What's that mean? Lit? Yeah, cut, mate. All oh, right. Oh, cheers. Thanks. That's the message that's uh, thingy. Uh, done, done that. We're on lockdown, so it's a uh, nice fresh. That's tight, that is. That nice. is tight. Yeah, nice fade there. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> three, two, one, action. Right. Welcome back to the Sean Fontana podcast. We had Mr. Josh Trigwell on last time, and it was such a great podcast that we had to have him back on. Again, if you've not listened to the first podcast with me and Josh, I do recommend you go back and listen to that one. But this one today is going to be on coping through lockdown three. I know it's uh, a lot of people are struggling just now, but me and Josh are going to, you know, get into it, coping mechanisms, what we are doing, what we're, uh, advice we're giving our athletes to cope through this tough time. So without further ado, Joshy boy, how are you doing? Very well, mate. Very well. A little bit tired from the session this morning, but uh, all in all, mate, healthy, good, positive. That's it. And, did, you know, last podcast, you did say that through lock, when lockdown three was coming in, you were not allowed to travel um, to go home and see your family for Christmas or New Year. Is that still the case at the moment? Yeah, yeah I can't go anywhere. So thankfully, Luke, who I live with, um, he stayed behind. He was like, I'll, I'll still be meant for Christmas. So... It's very, very nice of him. Uh, Owen actually went back to Ireland. So, but me and Luke had a great Christmas together. Just ate way too much food, had a couple of drinks here and there, listened, listened to Drake, and I've you know, got on our feelings <laughs> and, uh, and his trains, basically, mate. So it was, a good, it was actually quite a nice Christmas. Obviously, it'd be better to go home and see, you know, see the family. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it goes for lots and lots of people at the moment. Um, so it's been difficult, but that's why you got to sit together. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, like, this is, you know, look at yourself who is sticking to the rules and then there's other people having, like, house raves at New Year and just <laughs> hating the spread of corona and you're just like, come on, guys, like, how easy is it just to listen? Like, do what you're told. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know if it's new society, a new generation, but it just seems like, I mean, I don't know if it's the UK. I don't know if we'll get that. Like, don't tell us what to do. Don't like. Don't tell us what to do. Oh, so we'll do the complete opposite. You know, stay in your house. Nah, yeah. I'm out. I'm having a party. Crawling, yeah. crawling over each other like hamsters, just giving each other COVID. Um, but I mean, it's not just happening in England. It's not just happening in London. It's happening in Scotland. It's happening everywhere. You know, people that just can't stick to the rules and you know just do what they're told. They're delaying the process of somebody like yourself, myself as well, like especially you being up in Teddington away from your family, you couldn't get to your family for Christmas or New Year. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, you know, I, I, people need to understand how selfish they're being to do that, to then prevent others from being able to had, have that little sort of five-day Christmas window that they could have had. But because of people not listening, we kind of scuppered that one. Um, mm -hmm. Did your parents send you your Christmas presents? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just going to have a Christmas too. Yeah, we pretty much cancelled Christmas. Like, yeah. my dad's birthday's on January 1st. I sent him loads of liquor. Yeah. That was about it. So, um, but yeah, like, that's the thing. When you, fall, when you fall back on that comment about the, um, you know, people going to raves and stuff, I mean, you know me, like, I love to socialise and go for a few drinks myself. Like, my social life is so important to my running. Like, I need to have that balance between, you know, I go and run, I go and train hard, and I compete, but I also need have my friends have a few beers to let my hair down and just have a good time with people uh, but we're going through a time where like you know some of my um the kids i coach their parents um some of them are doctors and stuff and i spoke to them prior to christmas and they were saying you know, josh it's getting seriously bad out there and i said what do you mean so the icu is completely full they're opening up they're opening up they're opening up uh children's hospitals now to get patients in there people uh, some have been treated in ambulances and i was like are you actually joking me that's how serious it's getting. Like I'm, I mean, I live in goddamn next to Bushy Park. You know, I don't, I'm, I don't really see much of what's going on, but to yeah. hear it from her perspective, and she says to me, like, it's a proper war zone. You know what I mean? It's that bad. Mm -hmm. um, but because people aren't seeing it, and it's not being put on TV as much in terms of actually seeing the actual evidence of what it's like in hospitals. Yeah. I mean, they are doing a bit better now in terms of you're seeing nurses and stuff being interviewed. But it's, yeah, it's, it's quite scary to kind of, see the level of what it's got to you know yeah and I, I don't know if some of 
some of the UK or some of the world are sort of taking precedent from, you know, a lot of Americans think that this is a hoax. You know, there's a lot of, you know, yeah. that they think it's a fugazi and stuff like that. And you're just going, <clears throat> guys, like the government wouldn't be actually shelling out their money mm. to people to stay in their house, to do nothing. Mm. And at, at one point could crumble the economy. Yes. A hoax. That just would not happen. So it's 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 uh you know I'm it's, I feel I, the reason I think I'm gonna I'm going on a wee bit about it is because I actually feel bad the fact that you can't actually go home and see your family. Yeah, but it's the same for millions of people though. Like, and in the end, like the way I look at it is like my family's healthy. Like my mum's recovering from cancer, which is great. Like she's pretty much on the mend, which is amazing. Like my dad's healthy, my cousins, my are healthy. Like everyone's good. Do you know what I mean? Like it could be, I could be, I could be at home. My mum could have coronavirus. My dad could be in a really bad place, but everyone's healthy. So you've got to find the silver lining. So my mum would say to me all the time, like without everything that happens in life, find the silver lining. You've got to, you got to search for that. And that's really important. And so that's what we did as a family for Christmas. We're like, right, you can't get home, but we're healthy here. So lock yourself in and just be smart about things. So that's what we're doing. Good man. That's what I like to hear. Like, yeah. I, you know, I don't know if you do it with your, your athletes and things, but you know, Get, get, like, if you've got like a, a Facebook group or anything like that or a, a, a group chat where you know just sending them if you're looking at things from a more positive point of view mm. you'll find that the opportunity and every difficulty instead of finding all the difficulties within yeah you know, I mean for me like I keep all my clients very individual I know that there's lots of there's other online running coaches who like to build a build a community build a tribe Whereas for me, I like to kind of keep it individual. I think it's very, that's very important to me. So I can, firstly, it's kind of having that one to one relationship with every single client for me is very, very important. And I just, yeah, I just want to keep, kind of keep everyone. I mean, if they want to mix on Instagram, brilliant. Like, I don't really mind, but I'm not pushing towards that kind of community tribe, GRT, like this is our, this is our territory and no one else can come inside of it. I don't want to do that. You know, yeah. I'm, there, I'm there to help people. If they want to run up this, a marathon, run on a half marathon or whatever, they can come to me and I can set them up and off they go. In terms of kind of trying to create that positive attitude during this wild pandemic, um, it's going back to what I said in the previous podcast, it's just setting goals every three to four weeks, you know, keeping their mind ticking over. So uh, a few of the clients, obviously Christmas time is not the best of times of year in terms of it reminds them of family and they may have family issues and stuff and whatever. So it's quite a difficult time. Mm-hmm. And so for those people, I was setting lots of training like lots of higher volume, but done in a in a in a safe manner. Mm-hmm. Lots of rehab stuff, lots of SNC stuff. So I was keeping their mind ticking, and we we're doing like little goals every three to four days, essentially. Not like time trials, but just like adding volume here. Let's see how your body can cope with this. Let's see how your your mind can cope with that. And so they're constantly engaged in the training. So off work, and so they're far more time to be with be in their heads. Mm-hmm. And so I utilize that time to be like, right, let's really engage you in the training for the next two or three weeks yeah. and see what's out of it. And then it's like going to a training camp, you know, like they often say you can always find two or three percent more in a training camp in, in a physical way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that could be out of your training or could be, you know, just a summer camp, you know, somewhere in Portugal. Mm-hmm. You can always get maybe some one, one or two percent more of an effect on your training. So I sort of took that into the Christmas period for my athletes. Like, okay, let's use this time now to really give it a little bit extra percent and see what we can get out of it. So focus on sleep, focus on your diet, focus on the hydration side of things. Mm-hmm. Look after your head when we're not training and then just see what the end result could be uh, mid-January time, which has been you know, really good for a lot of them. Yeah, so. good, no, good man. And, um, how's, and how's your training going? It's going all right. Um, I think we spoke a lot about it in the, in the previous podcast and obviously we spoke about it just before coming on here. <clears throat> For me right now, it's building that base. And I said to you, you know, I want to get to April time just physically really, really fit. You know, I, before jumping on here, you know, I did a 10 mile tempo at 516 average, you know, and I felt smooth, I felt, you know, I felt comfortable. Um, and so for me, it's like, if I can just get to April time, run in say 10 miles at five tens and be able to pick up the last mile quite quick, um, and be able to sustain and hold, you know, my long runs at, for 20 miles, 22 miles and utilizing my recovery time. I've actually put on a bit of timber, actually, believe it or not. So I've been, I've been so much calisthenic stuff like pull-ups, press-ups over the last six months. I've put on a few kg actually, which is really surprising, but 
I feel better for it. I don't know why. I don't think it's going to help me at all. So when I see Craig, he might be like, right, lose that right now. And I'll be like, oh, but I've worked so hard to get in. Wait now I get him to lose it. But um, I feel like physically like really good. Yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, like I said, the main thing for me now in my, in my head is to get to April time and be just so enormously fit that I can just be like an open book to Craig and just be like, look, I'm, I'm in great nick at the moment. So let's work with this right now. Yeah. Rather than saying, like we said, when you're injured, you take for granted that fitness. Of when course. you are fit and healthy. So I kind of want to take that mindset and be like, right, let's, let's, let's attack this. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's really important to me. You, how are you getting on? Yeah, good. Uh, you know, just little, little steps every week. Um, this week I've done around 40 miles. I'll probably finish up at 40 miles this week. You know, not a typical 120, 100 mile a week sort of stuff that I love to do, but, you know, it needs must. Um, making sure I'm on the bike, cross training on certain days, taking taking a lot more time to look after my body because at the end of the day, like you're saying, it is when you're injured, you're, you're wishing you could be back, but when you're back and you're flying, you do take the position that I am in right now all for granted when you push that extra five, ten seconds in your, your mile reps or your tempo. Um, you know, and we were saying this on the last podcast, you know, this one really got to me because I tried my best to hold myself back, but, you know, still shit hits the fan and life doesn't go your way all the time and you've just got to, you know, reset, refocus and you know just deal with the, the card the hand, the hand that you're dealt with at that moment in time I'm to butt in there for like one second and tell yeah. you what, because we spoke after the podcast the first one so we just kept chatting for like half an hour about everything and you got super emotional didn't you oh, about the cool. whole 10k and i thought i remember like i remember that like you were just literally like visibly started getting a bit teary and i was there going wow like really like this is this is your passion like through and through like you know what i mean like you're so like I didn't want to like walk away feeling bad about it. But I was just like, man, that is that is a passionate lad right there. If you need to see passion visually, do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. I, mean, we, we, <laughs> I was just like, oh, I know. I know. Sorry, kept, no, keep going. No, no, like, it's it's uh, you know, there's locked like lockdown three. I think, and this is this is a topic how how to cope through lockdown three. But you know, as an athlete. Well, first and foremost, I'm a I'm a husband. Well, I'm a son, and then I'm a husband, and then I'm a dad to little Simba, and then I'm an athlete. Well, I'm a I'm a businessman with my my personal training, online coaching, and then I'm an athlete because basically, you know, I'm not in a position to be. I'm not that good at athletics at this moment in time to be paid for athletics. So that business has to take precedent to allow me to do that. That thing that I love to do as well, so that has to to be in that um, has to be a little bit higher up that priority list. This lockdown three, at like when we we, we go back and you know we're, we're chatting in the first podcast where, you know, I actually there's a lot of people out there that when they got when they knew they were going back into lockdown, there's probably people actually going yes, I'm getting furloughed, I'm going to stay in my house and I'm actually going to get paid for doing nothing. There'll be some people that were like that because they actually hate their job that much. You know what I'm saying? They get, to, they get to sleep in, they get to watch, binge watch Netflix, binge watch Amazon Prime, on their phone, Facebook, Instagram. And look, if people are wanting to do that, and that's what they, honestly, I've got nothing against it. But when I love walking into a gym and training people and connecting with people, and then also getting injured, two big things that I love in my life that aren't going the way I'd like them to go. And also I've lost around about, I've lost, when I just, I just done my taxes there, I've lost thousands, I mean thousands of, because I fall through the cracks of the, um, the last person, the last self-employed people that would get furlough was if you'd done taxes in 2018 to 2019 and then we're trading 2019 to 2020. I paid tax in 2019 to 2020, and then I'm trading 2020 to 2021. So I fall through the gap every single time there's a new furlough scheme out. So, you know, that's why I'm doing the online classes. I'm squat jumping, I'm lunge jumping around my house. I've got the, the wee, you know, thing for my YouTube videos and stuff here. I use this as my little studio. Yeah. 
I've never been more injured in my entire life this year, but I've also not done as many classes in my life as I have done this year. And that, that's not to say that, like I said, business, got to pay the bills, got to pay the mortgage, the car, the, the council tax, put food in your belly, provide for the family. Um, to the point where, you know, I, so, you know, business was going super well. I mean, really well. The, the point where I could afford a Mercedes, got a Merc, living the dream in terms of my little dream, my wee dream. Like when I was in Drumchapel, you might not, drum, not know what like, Drumchapel is, but it's like the Bronx, you know, life expectancy is like 17 years old. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Um, <laughs> You know, a, you see people uh, taking drugs, alcoholics, smoking weed, um, like heroin. You see people, you know, just junkies and all that walking around the street. It's not really safe for kids to be out there at certain times of night. Um, you know, living in a council house and then moved to Mary Hill, which is another, it's, it's not, it's like the Bronx to the Bronx but in a sort of maybe in a wee bit of a better environment, you know, um, in terms of it's a little bit safer where I, where I was living, but you go into the, the wrong areas, you know, like I, I, I said on a YouTube channel, I've been chased by samurai swords, um, had, had to hide under a car at night because I was getting chased by uh, a gang with knives. And they thought like, if as soon as I, my jacket rustled, I thought like, if, I, if they hear I'm under this car, cause I see their footsteps, they thought I was going to jump the fence. Then if they look under it, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen to me, but I was petrified. And so, so like, you know, I went through a bit of yeah, And one thing that I've always looked at is like one of my uncles who's quite successful in a business is uh, as a builder, my uncle Doogie. And he has always had really nice cars. And I don't know if it's a guy thing. I don't know if it's a, a guy thing. And maybe ladies like a nice car as well, but it's always been my prerogative. Like you know, when I'm successful, I want to have a, that I, I want to make sure I can afford it first and then I'll get it. Mm -hmm. But now there's a point be, that was that was my wee treat for doing so well in my business, you know, got a Merc. But now when things are getting this hard, I'm actually I want to now sell that because that, again that doesn't make me happy. What makes me happy is providing for my family, paying the mortgage, paying the paying the real bills, not having that see if I can't afford it, it has to go. You know, um, so lockdown has been really, really tough on me in that regard. So there's a lot of things, you know, in the back burner where pff, I'm just like, it's get, it's getting tough. You know, I wanted to open up my own gym as well, but with the amount of money that the profits that I've taken a hit, that won't that won't happen for a, a long, a long, a, a quite a while as well. So when we're talking about, you know, the 10k and me getting injured, I'm just like, pff, it, I'm going. It's, it's getting tough, you know, it's, it's getting really tough. Um, and that's probably why, you know, us chatting about coping mechanisms today for people who are pr probably, they're in a tough, like I'm talking about selling my car and there's people probably out there that are sleeping in a sleeping bag under, you know, a canal bridge or, you know, freezing to death on, you know, a, a park bench somewhere. Like, I understand that I understand that I'm going through a tough time. I understand that you're going through a tough time. But like you said at the start, that perspective where you were saying about, you know, I know that you can't see your family just now, but you understand that there's other people in worse positions. Mm -hmm. If you can take yourself there and keep that perspective, you'll, you'll, you'll do all right through this year. You'll, you'll have days where you struggle, like we all do. But I think that is when you can pull on the sort of the perspective where you go, right, well, you know, if you've still got food in your belly, a roof over your head, and you get some people to talk to around about you, and you can still make ends meet, you still fight and fight and fight. This kind of reveals your character. You know, how, am I going? Am I going to fight for my business? Are you going to fight for your business? Are you going to fight for your athletes? Am I going to fight for my athletes? Am I going to fight for my wife and my house, my mortgage? My like, this this reveals your character. How strong are you? And well, I, think, you know, I mean, yeah. Go on. Sorry, carry on. No, no. Like I, I think that you know we should actually look at how strong we are to still yeah. be here fighting through this. Well, I think, I think because of social media, isn't it? Like for me, I measure success. I look at, I look at someone successful who can put food as a male and a yeah. female, I guess. Who can put food on the table for their family. Like that's a success for me. 
Yeah. Whereas Absolutely. a lot of people measure success by how much income they get on a monthly basis. Yeah. You know, like that guy's driving a you know, Ferrari or whatever, he's successful. Well, no. Like if you can provide you know, food in the family for your table, put food on the, fa- on the table for your family, yeah. and you've got your roof over your head for your kids, and they go to school, and your wife's happy, your husband's happy, or whatever it is, then well done. That's what my dad always said to me, like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's a success in itself. Yeah. It's hard. The world's hard enough the way it is, and that's why social media is just so criminal to, to lots of people's mindsets. Yeah. There's, you know, fed algorithms of just, you know, all these flashy cars and think this is what success looks like. And if you're not 30 years of age and you're a multimillionaire and not got your own business, that's, you know, making millions of turnover, you know what I mean? Then you're, you know, you're, you're a failure. You're a failure. And yeah. it's just, well, that's a complete lie. But I, I feel like there's a lot of kids and I feel sorry for those to a certain extent who are in the 15 years of age or, you know, 18 years who could fall into that trap very comfortably. And I think looking at male suicide rates, which we spoke about just before jumping on here, you could see a big jump in that in the next 10 years when, because obviously kids are being more easily influenced from social media. I think we've gone into age gap where I think we're luckily we can kind of see for what it is and be like, well, before I didn't really have this growing up. So I can kind of take myself away from that and understand yeah. the reality is like I just mentioned, yeah. things with your family is a success mm-hmm. and early millions isn't. If you earn millions, well, 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 well done to you, mate. Like fair play to you. Doesn't mean, it doesn't mean you're better than me or something, no. but I think that's going to be quite interesting research to see what's going to be like in 10 years time is will there be male, will there be higher suicidal rates because of, you know, uh, people feel like they're, they're a failure because of, because of the influence of social media. Yeah. I mean, you see it now. I mean, I never heard there's ki- kids I work at a school um, and, you know, some of them, uh, I remember one, one child last year in year five, he said, oh, I have really bad anxiety. I don't know. I didn't know what anxiety meant when I was in year five. I only, really, I only heard about it. Until I was about what 14, 15. And I was like, oh, I thought it was just nerves, like butterflies in your stomach. Like, I thought it was just normal. Yeah. Yeah, I've got really bad anxiety. And I was like, wow. And like kids know about depression and all of this. And I'm like, really? Like when I was in primary school, I wouldn't want to kick a ball about all day. Yeah. Just like have a laugh with the boys and like play bundle and you know, all just like play mafia, which we think called mafia. But like, you know what I mean? Like I never had never thought about nerves or anything like that. I just got on with it. Like, come on. But I understand like that's a, and me saying that right now, like, oh, get on with it. Come on. That's, you can't really say that anymore to anyone. Yeah. It's, you know, that's just, you kind of just like, come on, man up. But I'm, I'm told to say not man up at school. I can't really say the word man up anymore. Yeah. And like my dad, who's like, my dad's a blue collar man, would be like, get on with it. Yeah. Like, fuck, I'm going with it. But I've, I've seen too many videos on social media now where they just say like, well, you can't say that. Yeah. And I get it to a certain extent. I do understand it because people deal with anxiety and depression in very different ways to how we might manage it yeah. and understand that they need someone to talk to. And I'm not saying like you're weak because that, I'm not saying that at all. No. But it's just that it's different ages. Yeah. And it goes back onto the comment why I mentioned it'd be interesting to see what's going to be like in 10 years time with suicide rates and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah, like I pulled a few stats out because I, you know, I, I don't, I don't obviously want to make this like a, a male dominant podcast because a lot of a lot of females do listen into this and actually, you know, love the feedback. Uh, they actually love the podcast with the feedback we've had. But you know, Scotland uh, is sitting at one of the high, per hundred thousand. Just now, Scotland's sitting at the highest with Wales sitting second, England sitting third. In Northern Ireland, it says it's still this the sort of demographic of the, the male suicide rate still has to come in. But overall in the UK, it's 21.7 males to every 100,000 that are committing suicide just now. And that was a figure in from 2018 to 2019. And they feel that the stats will be higher due, during COVID, uh, during this, this sort of pandemic. And then the amount of uh, when the, the the clients that I train in the gym, some of them are uh, NHS staff that are ambulance service. And the amount of call outs just now they're getting to overdose, drug overdoses, is it's just like it's through the roof. Um, mm-hmm. And there's a couple of, there's, uh, was a gentleman that I was speaking to and he said, there's, there's two things that's happening is through lockdown one, addicts couldn't maybe get what they wanted during that time. So they actually had to, they, 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 they were restricted to what they could have. So then when lockdown one was over, they, went, they tried to have what they had before lockdown one, but their bodies couldn't cope with it. And they went in overdose. 
Do you see what if you if you know what I'm saying? Um, there's, because their sensitivity was actually decreasing, and then they go in and they, they load it up with what they had previously before lockdown when they could get their hands on stuff. It kind of yeah. went cold turkey ish, and then yeah. get back up and overdosed, and then also because of just like just not not enjoying this this way of life at this moment in time, and you know whether whether that be a male or whether that be a female, like. <clears throat> We're, we're, going th- it's, we're going through we are going through a tough time um, and like you were saying with the anxiety and the depression like those those numbers are going to keep going through the roof <laughs> and with social media like me and you me and you both know that like it's the same as like if we you know we get this bottle of water here and you know you drink too much water you can drown yourself you can die with too much water but it's good for you you know to a certain extent anything used in the right way can be good for you and the human race, i.e. the messages you send out on Instagram, the messages I try and send out on Instagram, if you try to use it in a positive light and try and create positivity, energy, inspiration, motivation, focus, drive from these posts, great. But I think that you're right in saying that when Instagram has these algorithms, it will latch on to you know what you were maybe searching for a couple of days ago it's then going to start popping its way into your feed if it's in facebook if it's in instagram and they're they're manipulating they're they're basically i feel they're trying to push you into a corner in the nicest possible way saying buy or die that whole like wolf and wall street like you you suffocate them like on the phone you know when leonardo dicaprio's like they buy or they die you know that sort of thing um in the nicest possible way, I feel that they're just they're just pushing you into a corner and making you think that you had the conscious decision to buy that item or were looking at it, but it was a it was a subconscious seed planted many weeks or months ago through you know subliminal marketing, advertising, whatever it was, and it just kept flicking up every you know every so often and just enticing that part of the brain that was getting stimulated towards going towards that item. Um, and then when you're saying about the life as well, like, you know, the fast life of these guys in Ferraris, Lamborghinis, mansions, helicopters, millionaires, billionaires, you know. Some of them, and some of them do flash it all over the place on Instagram. Yeah. You know, so like yeah. basically, you know, if I go back to me having a nice, like me having a fancy car, yeah. you didn't know about that. No, I didn't, I didn't actually. Nobody, know, nobody knows about that because I don't. I, I don't want to portray that life on Insta. I don't want to portray me sitting and driving and thinking that this is a. This is a. It's not because the reason I got there was through tears. Well, basically blood, sweat, and tears. You know where there's been times where I've been in work with two root canal infections and I, I look like a chipmunk, and my my clients are giving me like we uh, one of my um, Indian clients gave me. Uh, a wee box of cloves because it's got that the clove oil like natural coat to put underneath my just to, so that I could bear the pain during training sessions. It came in where we because it, like you know the flu it, like I would uh, there'd be points where I'd be sitting on a I'd be sitting on a bench after training and have no food in my tummy and sitting there and be like I need like my legs I just need to sit down because I've done a ten hour shift ten clients and I'm going. Just, I just need to, my legs are killing me today. Like, and they'll, they'll understand, like, it's all right. Yeah. And I'll be, I'll still be training them. It's like, that's what gets you to the end goal. It's that yeah. suffering, that sacrifice, that desire, that ambition, that drive to build, yeah. you know, it, it doesn't, it didn't, it didn't, you know, the, the life that we have or the life that you build comes with the, the decisions you make. Mm. And I, I feel that when we have these, action and ambitions everybody has them so you if you say to me you know sean i want to run 335 for the 1500 or if, we, if we've just say like 10k i want to break 30 minutes for 10k sean for listeners that probably you know people would understand the sort of 30 minutes for 10k sean i want to run 30 minutes for 10k right so there's your ambition now i set you the training plan and you then start missing days well, your ambition's up here, but your actions are down here. So we're not meeting in the middle. We're not actually, we're not meeting. 
But if you if you go with that plan and you get everything done and you're hitting your three minute Ks or your two fifty five Ks faster than race pace, then what happens? Your action and your ambitions both meet. So that's a that's a good place to be. But I think a lot of us, and we are speaking off the podcast there with, you know, everybody wanting that Ferrari, Bentley, Lamborghini lifestyle, mm-hmm. ambition. Mm-hmm. They don't want to work seven days a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. don't want to. They don't want to work till 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. So what I say to people is, you, t- you tell me how much you're willing to suffer and I'll tell you where you can go. You tell me where your ceiling is and I'll tell you what you can get for your ceiling. So if you tell me seven days a week till midnight, I mean, your ceiling's up here. If you tell me you want to work Monday, eight till five, and that's it, you don't want to do any, then you'll see you lower your ceiling for what you're looking to expand for in life. Because you need to be willing to suffer and sacrifice for those bigger and those those high-end things. Yeah. It's, it's not, you can't have a normal lifestyle, try to live that sort of, and that's where the disconnect's happening. I think a lot of kids, they see it, you know, they see, like we're talking about Drake, um, J. Cole, Rick Ross, you see all these Lambos and, and they're going, well, if you see it all the time, if you see it in music videos all the time, if you see it on Instagram all the time, if you see it in Facebook all the time, well, it, it, it kind of seems like it's like... Been fed that, with me. Yeah. I, like, that's reality. That's yeah. you should, you should be kicking about Lambos all day. It's like, this is success. Like, this is what success looks like. Yeah. yeah. And when you're... No disrespect, but when if you are working at McDonald's, serving people at McDonald's. Star. You, you're, and, and you're like, you're crying about that you're not having, you've not got a Bentley or a Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. It's because your actions aren't meeting your ambitions. You either need to lower your ambitions or you need to step up your actions. Well, I don't know about you. It's, I know, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not disrespecting those who, you know, do get furloughed and they're going like, yeah, like, I can't believe this. And, they want to binge watch Netflix. <clears throat> now, I don't know if it's me being at 27 at the moment. I want to hear your opinion as well on yourself, but I can literally watch TV for about a solid seven minutes and then I'm itching to be productive. Mm-hmm. And that could be uh, texting a client or updating some plans or looking at my looking at my own training, what could be doing, a bit of rehab, a bit of S&C. I'm have to, I can't, for the sake of me, sit down for more than 10 minutes. And it could be a case of I need to like have, look at myself a bit more at the moment in that perspective. But I just can't waste away a minute at the moment. Yeah. Like today, like I said, like, you know, I've got up, done my rehab stuff, done a 10 mile tempo, done my coaching from a very far distance to make, to make uh, aware, everyone aware of that. And then I came on the podcast. So I'm being productive all day. And then after this, I'll do another run. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, I struggle to just sit and just be relaxed. And I've got my own ambitions in life. Like, you know, you're in the Mercedes and stuff. Like my thing is to get myself a motorcycle and then ride to Milan you know, this summer. Like that's, but I completely by myself. That's like a goal of mine away from running. Yeah. So like, I want to like do that sort of thing, you know? Um, but I think it's interesting because I often say about you, Sean, is that you're someone who just, you're a very passionate person. And I think your passion will change as you get older with different uh, subjects. Mm-hmm. But I think it's crit- what's interesting is that passion comes from the word, uh, the, the Latin word, passio. I might be saying it wrong, incorrectly, but passio in Latin means suffering. Yeah. So you are someone who you, know, you thrive under the suffering process, I believe. You know what I mean? So you, you love to, you know, if it's suffering in a productive manner not like in a way in which it's pain related, but in a, in a way in that, that you know that I'm suffering for a great life for me and your wife, essentially. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's really interesting to hear kind of like that thought process, what you're talking about there and with the Mercedes and stuff. And yeah, it's, it's really interesting to listen to. Yeah. So, but also like, like absolutely, you know, your motorcycle to Milan. <laughs> yeah. is, like, I genuinely believe, see if you can afford or you work so hard that you can afford to do these things in life yeah. and that you want to do them and they are part of your, you as a person in terms of exploring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have absolutely, like, if, like, I know we might be shitting on people that might have like, Ferraris and that, but see if they, they people can afford them and they're not, like, mm. up to their eyeballs in debt, but also don't think, like you were saying at the start, just because you're a billionaire or a millionaire that you're any better a person 
than another person that doesn't earn that amount or doesn't have those things. Well, I'm quite I'm quite scared that if I was a millionaire and I say I achieved it, and I right? say that with the bunny bunny ears for those who are listening, my biggest fear then would be like, well, now what? <laughs> Because yeah. for me, like for me, like the process of me building my business right now is the most joyous thing yep. about seeing it grow, you know, and just seeing it like blossom into this really cool thing is is I think the best part of it. Yep. I think when it's a success and I've got all I want and I've got it, my world. Well, okay, well, what's the, then I'll be like, well, what's the next challenge? Yeah. Like, I mean, completely honest with you. And so, like, I don't want to be a millionaire yet. Like, I'm probably on my way to it, and so are you. But I'm in that process of like, I want to enjoy this completely and be completely present with it and be able to help people like so much. Do you know what I mean? So that's just, that's another thought to it as well, you know? And so I think falling back on the comment of like with kids today and, and they're kind of seeing success with millionaires and Ferraris and stuff like it's not, like I said, like my dad always said to me, you know, having food on the table for, for me and mum was a massive success to him. And roof over the head, the bills paid, like that was enough. And mm-hmm. that, I stick to that so much even now, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, like I, like, there's a famous saying, and it's, I think it was Conor McGregor that said it as well. Oh, well, I love that guy. Well, Everybody yeah. wants it till they get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that is it. As a human being, it's going ha- to happen to you, whether you, right, so you'll get, let's say you get bronze at the British champs, junior champs. What's mm-hmm. next? silver yeah. what's next gold what's next retaining that gold medal double yeah. double like we that is that is i think the beauty and the curse of us as human beings maybe not maybe not everybody's that way maybe me and you are just wired a little bit differently there's a there's a large percentage of people that are wired like that where you know being satisfied in the process, but understanding you'll you'll level up a wee bit, and then you'll move into that zone, and you'll you'll complete that, and then you'll level up into another bit. Whether that's you know expanding your financial you know bank balance, whether that's expanding the amount of people that you train in your business, whether that's you know expanding in terms of building an establishment for your business, or whatever your your goals are, those levels you'll get there. And you'll enjoy and immerse yourself in that process, whatever it may be. And then you'll go, right, how do... It's, it's not even like, what's next? It's like, how do I get better? Yeah. You're like, how do I get better at this? How do I provide a better service to the people that I'm already, you know, helping? Just How do I get better at that? Mm-hmm. So that's why you're going away and developing yourself and, uh, you know, training plans and understanding, you know, different energy systems or what sessions will work for this person and that person. You're just relentlessly working on your craft and as you're doing that you're leveling up a little bit more and it, I, you know some people might could you can get obsessed in it but you know i think that's just a word that lazy people use for people who are you know yeah, actually yeah, yeah. you know getting after it and really like I laugh, I laugh at people anyway the ones who just decide to moan at you yeah I, so i, 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 I love way, like. that philosophy that you've got like this you know I, I know you asked me like in the last podcast will i ever be happy yeah. And I said, obviously, short answer, no, because we'll always try and find the next thing to to keep progressing. Being never, being never full. The next high, yeah. Yeah, and I think you've also got that within you. I think some people have it at, I guess, what you could just like controllable levels. Some people have it at like, some people like it's a gift. It can be a gift and a curse. Like we said about the water, it can be good and it can be bad. You know the, the how you use that obsession and that passion to to how you you make things grow or how you you know your stepping stones in life. You can use it in a That's good. The most way. important parts as well, though the stepping stones are the most important part. I think. That's it. Yeah. I'm more, I've got so many like targets this year. Yeah. In both the online running myself and obviously what I want to do away from running and stuff. Like I've got all, I've got it all written down somewhere. Like yeah. I know exactly what I know exactly what to do and how to get there. Yeah. And I think people like. To, I said maybe a minority of people, but they like to kind of be in dreamland. Whereas I like to literally physically write it down yeah. and then be like, right, how do I get here? Yeah. And then that's it. Then I then I next year I'll be like, right, well, how do I up up it from last year? Mm-hmm. So it could be motorcycling all the way to India or something, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. 
that's like you. You know what I mean? Like it's just that it's for me. That's what it is. It's it may, maybe it is such that high, but you know what I mean? Like it gets me out of bed in the morning. Yeah, and yeah. a human being that wants to wake up in the morning, <clears throat> that's got focus, it's got goals, yeah. a want, a desire, yeah. a passion, a drive. Nowadays, a lot, a lot of people, you're, you're, you're finding yourself. There's a lot of people out there wondering who are lost. And I want to say this as well, actually. I mean, you, if you've got kids what listen to this, like 17, 18 year olds, I think it's a really important thing is that you can always go out, right? Go out and party. Like, you know, once it's done, anyone, anyone go out and party. Anyone can go out, you know, do some coke, do drugs, whatever it is that gets people going, right? Anyone can do it. Go to a festival, go travel, anyone can do it, right? But if you are like a young athlete listening to this, how many people can go say, how many people can go away and say, I want to stop for a minute, Ma? Because my my eight, six year old nan could go and do some drugs than I actually wanted to. But could she go and run a four minute mile? And actually couldn't. Well, no, it's facts, it's facts, isn't it? It's facts. <laughs> I, 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 no, I love a party. I love I love to go into party. I love socializing with people, getting to know their story, like having a good time. I get it. I love it. And I've done it. But I'm at a point now where I'm like, you know what? Maybe if I actually miss those parties, I could be at a high level in athletics and getting paid for it more. Right. So I mean, I possibly made that mistake. Now, if you're, long, if you're a young listener, I recommend to you just have that, look at it in that perspective instead. Like if, if I went back to when, to when I was like 18, 16 even, sometimes I missed a run to go to a party. Now, right, if that's me now, this sort of mindset, I'd be like, well, F that party, man. I'm, I'm going for a run instead. Like I want to go up in the morning and smash a session. Mm-hmm. I want a GB vest. I want an England vest. I want to go Olympics because Hank people can say they're an Olympian. Like, I mean, in the end, it doesn't make me better than anyone else. I'm Olympian. It makes me no better. It makes me no better than the person next to me because they're incredible at something in their own craft. Yeah. But for me, for myself, it'd be like looking myself in the mirror of a tattoo, going like, "Look at me. I'm, I'm a G right now." Like, that's me. That's for me only. Not for me yeah. to say you're here, down here, and I'm up here. Not, not at all. Just for me and be like, I'm, 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 I'm this right now. So yeah. like, that's what I mean. Like, <laughs> and that's the difference for young kids if they listen. I don't, know, I don't know why it came up, but I just wanted to say it. Like. No, like I, I, I 100, like when you're an athlete with time, time is not on your side. It's, mm. it, there's a ticking clock and there's a window of opportunity. And every day, sorry to say that window of opportunity just gets a little bit smaller <laughs> every single day. And you've got a you've got a time frame in which to achieve your your self driven self motivated goals, and booze is always going to be around before and after. Drugs are always going to be around before and after. If you want to dabble in all that shenanigans, yeah. money, cars, houses, women, men, whatever you're into, yeah. is all going to be around after you're done. So boss it right now. Yeah, literally. Like yeah. you know, I gave up, I gave up my business and I was I was charging 70 pounds an hour down in London as a PT. And mm. I I gave that I, I told my wife to give up her job at sweatshop as the, the manager mm. to go and live in the back arse of nowhere in Colorado mm. for for a, an, a full scholarship and out at altitude because I I just I was like I was so like because I came back from altitude, from France, bossed it at 10K, I thought, well, altitude must work for me. Mm. But it, it was a certain environment that worked for me, and that was having yourself and Vernon and all these other great athletes around me, and then taking a wee break oh. to altitude for a wee while, and then coming back to that nice environment. Being in a, I was, I was maybe not in the environment that was conducive for my type of personality of you know, when that competition got started and at altitude, you've got nowhere to go in terms you can't come back down to sea level to recover. And um, I took a big rip, but because time, take those opportunities and grab them by the absolute, grab them by the balls, man, and just get after it. Like, yeah. you're, you're 27. See, mate, see if I could be 27 again, just 27. Give me three years back. Yeah. I'd be doing stuff a lot different. I probably make some. I probably, I probably still would make some more mistakes because yeah. obviously yeah. you know, you know, I'm stubborn, yeah. mofo. But you know, it's time, man. Time, like you've got it. These kids as well. If you said like 17, 18 year old kids, they have got it. 
And I think you're going along the lines of do something today that serves you as a person mm -hmm. to make you better tomorrow. Don't, don't, yeah, don't fall into that peer pressure of going out to a party. So I did a couple of times, like, and then yeah. just get there. And then the next day, just like, pff, wasn't really worth it, was it really? Let's be honest. We are. And so, yeah, like for young kids listening, just get on it, you know, just be productive. Because people, people have fun, you know, people at first will laugh at you and like say, you know, a bit of a lone wolf and stuff. But once you start to bring some, you know, bring some success to you, to your name, and, you know, the family name gets a bit higher up and a bit more people start to know you, recognize you, then they want a piece of you. Yeah. And then by the time you made it big time as an adult, they'll be the ones who I knew that guy or knew that woman. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of it does a complete reverse. But they so, don't want to know you and. Yeah. So the first are the ones going like, yeah, sort off, mate. See you later. Like, we don't want you here anyway. Then it goes, well, I, I, yeah, like he's a, he's doing all right for himself. Then it turns to, I knew that guy. Yeah. I was really good mates with him or, or her. You know what I mean? It, it's a complete reverse effect. So be stubborn, be solo, be a lone wolf. Love it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I say, so. Do you think it's, see, because of all this social media, do you think it's harder to be a lone wolf and think for yourself just now? <clears throat> That's a good question, mate. Very good question. <laughs> uh, I mean, I could answer first and then, like, yeah, you're the first. Yeah, so yeah. I think that societal pressure has made it harder. For kids because we're so connected now we are so connected and our i think our value system has completely flip-flopped to shit sorry mm. my french but i feel that we are now on this grind of the priority scale of how many followers how many likes how many views how many comments that is now what we want to identify with that's now up in our priority scale. Like that's what our values, if people love or like or whatever they do or views or share my content or my post on social media, my value as a person's grown up because I have more likes. If I don't get any or I don't have any followers, I don't have any friends on social media, I don't exist as a human being. And a lot of people nowadays, there's been a lot of stories nowadays where kids, male and female, have committed suicide because they have felt worthless in, on social media. So that means that they're, they felt worthless as a human being in reality. Wow. Don't know that. And I, so I think, I think just now, be, because people want to feel so connected and so involved and have so many followers to create that notoriety or whatever it is that you know people are idolizing i think that it is a, a little bit a lot harder to have that lone wolf mentality and it's been seen in lockdown as well because they can't just contain with be at peace and at one with you and your mind People need to be constantly stimulated. WhatsApp, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, Amazon. People need to be connected. They need to feel connected in some sort of way. They can't just shut it all down and go, that doesn't serve me. There's research that isn't the research that says like when you get a buzz on your phone, it releases like it releases serotonin in the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yep. that's, like, that. like that's crazy to think and I, and I definitely have that i think and when i get like a bit of a buzz i'm like oh right, who's who's uh who's been thinking about me i mean you know, you, like, like you, your last video man getting a thousand odd views as well i was like geez I'm, yeah, you lost it 2000 already after like 24 hours ah. i was like what's going on here yeah, you're like, you're re-brain re inside you might be yeah, going yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, of course. but inside you there might be a part of your brain subconsciously going I know. When I woke up this morning, like so I never, I never look at my phone for the first thirty minutes when I wake up. I'm a big believer yeah. of that. Yeah. So and I, I went on it. I was like, Whoa, I'm real. Like not too bad, eh? But but then again, it, after a while, it, it kind of fades. But so yeah. I think I totally agree with you. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is now. You know what? I, I completely agree with you there, Sean. I, I don't think. It's a very, it's quite scary, <laughs> like you know. And I think this, I think for those who get bullied as well, I think that the the escapism from school is not there anymore. Um, so like even like when I hear kids, so sometimes I work one to one with children um, yeah. who just want to have a bit of a chat, 
Yeah. And uh, they'll be like, when I go home, they, they mock me on Fortnite and stuff like this. And so they've got no escapism from, from it at all. And so I'd, you know, I, I was chatting to them saying, well, why about we just switch off from video games and everything like that and just maybe apply yourself or apply your energy into something else that's more productive for yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, telling that, to a, telling that to a nine-year-old, eight-year-old is quite difficult because they're like, well, now Fortnite's life. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's, it's pretty hard, but um, yeah, it's a very difficult thing. And I think it, it kind of falls into that. You know, we're, as humans, we're, we want to fit in in tribes. Like, you know, for thousands of years, we were in small tribes. And then obviously we've expanded out into countries and continents and whatever. And so this fixation of wanting to fit in somewhere is still within our DNA. So it's vastly important for us. So, and I think Instagram is just highlighting that on a, on a huge level. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, if you don't have, say, over a thousand followers, then you're not as worthy as the person who's got 2,000 followers. Um, so, yeah, I completely agree with you. And it's a real shame, I think. And if someone listened to this and they kind of feel pressured from Instagram and social media, then I'd say delete the goddamn app and apply your energy to yourself for six months. You know, look at, look, you know, look up Sean, look up me, look up coaches, you know, look at a life coach, look, go into therapy. You know, there's this big kind of, um, stigma about therapy being you're weak you know you're you're not you're not good enough and you need help like look at you need help like what's wrong with you it's not that at all like therapy is you know it's a modern thing it's very much you know like this right here is to a certain extent probably therapy for us to yeah you know what i mean like we're, you know, we're both venting our, our views and on, on, on different topics yeah. um so i think uh yeah for the fourth time i, I totally agree with you um <laughs> And it kind of falls back on the comment about what I said earlier, you know, the research in the next 10 years on suicidal rates for both male and female would be quite interesting. Well, not, I shouldn't say interesting, but, you know, the, I think the rates of depression, the rates of anxiety and the rates of suicides, how's that, how has how's impact, uh, Instagram impacted that? Mm-hmm. And I think that kind of is a reason why people need to find sports or find challenges in life from a young age to become fixated on that will keep helping them grow because from, from the age for me, probably younger for you, but I started running at 16 years of age, then started Googling Olympics and stuff. And I got hooked and I was like, yo, I want to be part of this Olympics thing. This sounds pretty good. Get Olympic rings tattoo, like pretty cool. Yep. So then I saw Ross Murray and Andrew Asage and they got like Olympic rings. And I'm like, damn, this is, this is like a Roman sort of, uh, you know, kind of like the SPQR thing. So that for me was now like a fixation. And I think kids need to kind of find, and, and maybe not kids as well, but adults as well in their 30s and 40s who've you know, not gone past their best because there's so much more to achieve. You know, my old man like, still plays, he's 65 years of age and plays tennis like all the goddamn time. Lo- loves beers, but goddamn, he loves his tennis as well. You know what I mean? So, and he's always setting himself challenges to do things. And so is my mum as well for power walking. Do you know what I mean? So we're a very like, motivated family in that sense. That's probably why I'm quite lucky to kind of have that mindset from them yeah and um, but i think that for me has helped me overcome a lot of stuff quite quickly because i've just as soon as i've kind of felt as if i've lost myself then i'll be like right switch off done with that now i promise myself to this for six months time yeah. and i think you know of online coaching eventually and, and and inevitably i think i i will as an online running coach i think fall into live coaching very slowly similar to luke yeah. because i do find myself i love putting training plans together yeah. and i love seeing them succeed and i absolutely adore doing it but I really get more of a kick out of just helping people yeah. and on a more like spiritual or more like kind of just talking to them through certain issues they're going through. Yeah. I get more of a kick out of that, yeah. I think, um, if I'm being completely honest. And so, and, and yeah, that, that's what I have to say really, mate, on that topic. No, no, like, I, <laughs> I couldn't agree with you. Like, I, I think you'd be a great life coach. Yeah, no, I'm not looking into it at the moment. You've, yeah. got that, you've got that calm collective aura about you that when somebody walks in would feel calm within your presence yeah and then, you know? they, then, they, then they realize i'm a nut about 10 minutes later <laughs> hey what what person on this planet is yeah. <laughs> yeah, all, know, all messed up in our own weird and wonderful ways yeah, that's man. what i'm going to say like nobody's classified quote unquote here normal no. we've all get we've all get things going on in our heads that we're trying to control and suppress or you know, we are we've we've, we've all we're all we're all mental, we're all batshit crazy. Um just some maybe hide it better than others. Um you definitely do, no joke. <laughs> to, my, to my clients, definitely you know, I think I don't understand my clients think that I've got shit figured out. 
Yeah. And I'm like, like hopefully, I, I don't. All I do is make a very fast decision with the information that's in front of my face. That's it. You should never have it figured out anyway, I don't think. You should always be a learning process all the time. No. Like, I, 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 you know, that's what, I, I guess that's why I, I'm, I love these podcasts as well, because I get to explore other people's personalities, other people's motivations, other people's inspirations and aspirations, because we can all pull from each other. Mm-hmm. And then when you, when you say something, I'm like, it'll go into my brain of like, I like that. Maybe I need to incorporate that into my lifestyle now and try and make me a bit of a, I could say, a, a, a better version of myself previously than, than before we were on this podcast. Yeah. So yeah, that would make me be less aggressive to, you know, less angry in an argument towards my wife over something petty. You said something in a, you know, family, health perspective. Go in, you know, I'm, you sometimes blow up at the littlest things and you go, Oh, cool. like, no worries. You should look at um, stoicism, the philosophy. Yeah, no. So this is this is where hey, don't jump the gun. You don't jump the gun. Um, <laughs> I want to. I'll, I'll, so like because we're getting on the exercise. Yeah. And we're talking about you know kids having better, more more positive self-serving activities and avenues to go down. This you know getting right onto this topic of what could be, so during lockdown just now, there's probably a lot of people just, you know, sitting on their games, sitting on Netflix, sitting on their phone, their screen time is through the roof. And they probably also understand, they probably don't understand, their screen time's through the roof, but their yeah. mental health is off the chart. Like it's not really that, they, they, and there's, it's a vicious circle, isn't it? Where when your mental health isn't that good, because you don't feel connected to the world in reality, you then fall into the pit of keeping going on social media to find that vibe, that vibe, that uh, high, high void fulfillment from other people that you've never even shook a hand with, that you've never even gave a high five to, that somewhere across in Hong Kong or China somewhere and you're trying to get their adulation. It is so messed up. That, that you see, have you ever seen TikTok? No, I've not got TikTok. I no, no, I haven't got it. I've, I only heard about it a few weeks ago. My cousin showed me, and I cannot believe the amount of people who just want to get likes on a video. Yeah. Like, it's actually quite, I mean, people might disagree with me saying this, but I just cannot believe the level of what, the, of what TikTok's got to. Yeah. In terms of people, like, dance the video, then try and get those likes for it, and just the need to just, some women could be, you know, really quite dancing in, a, in, a, in like, an erotic way. Right. And then do the same thing. And all they're just looking for is just like, 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 like all the time. And it's, yeah. and I, I literally was like, I'm definitely not getting that up. <laughs> like, what yeah. is that about? I think there is a different side to it that's quite useful. But TikTok is like taking a whole new dilemma in terms of like seeking external validation to a whole new perspective. And there are quite a lot of kids in the, like year five, year six who've got the app. Right. And like, and they're kind of falling into that mindset of just trying to get likes and stuff or seeing it and then thinking like well when i'm older when i can upload videos and stuff that's what i'm going to be that's going to be my high my natural high is going to be trying to get likes it's scary man super yeah. scary like so, <laughs> the reason the reason i can admit i think somebody said to me the reason it's called tiktok is because <clears> of the amount of time that goes by that you don't know <laughs> when you're on it but you'll look up and go, <laughs> yeah. oh, Yes, I just spent an hour on TikTok. It's like TikTok, TikTok. The time goes by. I think I don't know, and you know, somebody can quote me if I'm wrong, but I, I genuinely feel I think that's why it was called TikTok, because when you watch all these videos and then you want to then replicate or you know, yeah, 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 you're spending all this time on it, and it's just TikTok, TikTok, tick. You spend all this time. Could be wrong, you know. If anybody's on here, you know, quote me if I'm wrong. I'll t- I'll take the hit. I don't care. But it is proper vanity and superficial at its highest level. Mm. Where is the meaning? Where is the deep meaning? Behind? There is some useful stuff in it, like like I don't yeah, like the, at. Yeah, on the different. There is like on if you she did show me some stuff that she looks at, and it's like right. quite quite your best in like 10 second videos but on the whole like the trending stuff it's always like 
dance to dance to certain music and stuff. And yeah. this, I'm like, well, I don't really get understand the point of it. Yeah, proper Obviously. parody. Yeah. Um, so, you know, what what would you say through you know to try and get away from those devices that don't serve us in a, a positive way? Unless you're getting paid from it, if you if, see if you're getting paid multi millions from these platforms, like go on, get on it, and you know, blooming, you know, that's that's your job. Get after it, you know, like. Yeah hey, each to their own, like, you've got to, you've got to pay the bills, like, we're paying our bills and everybody else, like, you've got to hustle, and if, if that's what's, you know, making you an influencer and making you money and paying your bills and giving you the life that you desire, then mm. all power to you, but just, you know, I guess from both of our sides, we just want it to try and be from a more, don't, don't pull wool over people's eyes and don't bullshit them and stop making them think that they're worthless just because they don't have a certain thing, product, or house or in a certain location that their life doesn't mean any more to them than it does like we're all we're all the same you know we all we all bleed when we get cut we're all the same you know um but what would you you know from your experience coping mechanisms then to help serve you in a more positive way mm. what would you say would be better to do in in in, in times that you can sort of serve yourself in a more positive light well, especially during lockdown okay. three. Yeah. And then and then those habits could hopefully then move into even when lockdown finishes, they can build that good habit just now and I've got the time. And then yeah, yeah. Well, I think that, that that kind of falls back on um James Clear, doesn't it? Atomic Habits book where I... Yeah, it's just about small habits. So small habits lead to big changes. So you do things in, in small steps. So it could be like read a book, but only read like three pages and then leave that when you're feeling good about it and then do the same next day and slowly over time it becomes a complete habit and still into your brain it's like when you go and brush your teeth you just know you probably are doing the same sort of motions you probably have done the last 10 years yeah. you know but uh in terms of staying uh positive i think falling back on the comment about stoic right. um, i think i'm a very I'm, i think i like to say i'm quite a stoic person yeah and what i mean by that is obviously we're going through a world pandemic me and sean have spoken about um social media being quite a bad influence there are you know there are pages who are great for you know for mental health and stuff like that but i think on the whole your feed and algorithm and what it does it can be quite a negative feeling so i think it's about being able to become completely self-aware and not allowing like i said in the previous podcast not allowing external forces um being able to affect your emotional um outlook on certain things so if it's instagram making you feel bad about yourself in a physical manner um i think more so on a woman perspective than rather than the male um, don't let it bother you. You know you're beautiful in the way you are, and and you know focus on what you're good at. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really really important. So just for, so first, you're not letting external things get the better of you because being stoic is about you're you're completely aware that you can only, you can only control your environment and your environment only. Whatever people decide to do to kind of infiltrate that um, is their own actions. And if you allow them those those actions to affect you, then that's going to have a negative effect on you, creating a domino effect in a negative way um so sorry to interrupt is there any books or things that you would recommend to sort of learn more about stoicism um you know what i haven't actually read a stoic book so i think the best thing to do is google it i've done lots of like article reading mm-hmm. so like research on that sort of stuff yeah. to kind of get a better understanding of it and watching um documentaries on it yeah. there was a prisoner who i i, I can't I can't remember his name who was put in jail for 35 years um and he applied stoic um for 35 years and put, i think it was a boxer and then um he actually was not he didn't actually commit the murder at all hurricane is that it i don't know yeah, it was like, Washington he played it in the movie the hurricane. yeah, yeah they made a movie about him yeah yeah, yeah. and so he applied the stoic philosophy and yeah. so he's like i'm not caging these walls these walls are caged in me or something like that yeah and it's just an incredible way to look at it um so I think that's a really cool way to kind of firstly um, view this lockdown in, in terms of that and just controlling, controlling your, your variables uh, and not letting anything else uh, get in the way of that. Secondly, falling back on the last podcast is setting targets for yourself. Now, obviously, me and Sean do that in a running perspective, but I think it, it could be in terms of completing so many books or I mean, you can add in here if you want to. Um, just creating lots of challenges for yourself with small targets. You know, I think we spoke a lot about that stepping stones. And for me, the stepping stones part is the most joyous part of the process. The end process is great. You know, the finishing line is great, but 
actually the process during it i think is the best part of it mm -hmm. uh, and you hear a lot of um, entrepreneurs speak about that that actually once they get there they're often like well now what because actually during the process during the stress during the the you know one step forward two sets back sort of approaches and they've got to deal with the situations actually helps build their character more yeah. um, but once they get to the top it's like well i've got nowhere else now to improve or to grow um, so that's why you see a lot of entrepreneurs then um go out to, to create something new, to kind of get that high again. Um, so setting self challenges, setting self targets is I think imperative during this lockdown. Obviously my lot do a lot of time trials, um, but do it in a kind of flow state philosophy. <laughs> I went to the video yesterday. So I think that's really important. So don't do it much too soon. Cause that's obviously that's gonna, that's gonna create burnout. Um, so do it in a manner which, you know, and I loved what you said in the last podcast, Sean, we spoke about, it's not about today. It's not about tomorrow. It's not about this week. It's not about this month. It's month after month year after year it's gonna make a difference and that i think that's flow state in a nutshell yeah. so don't look at yourself what you could be by the end of the week look at yourself well, what you could be in six months time yeah do you know what i mean so i think lockdown is the perfect opportunity to delete social media if you don't need it and or to put it to side for a little bit and just completely work on yourself <clears throat> no one's out going for fun at the moment in terms of like partying socializing or you know doing things like traveling and like that. So this is the perfect opportunity to put FOMO if you're missing out in, in the closet for a little bit. Cause yeah. I know people do suffer with that and just completely work on yourself. Um, again, last podcast, be enormously kind to yourself. This is not a time to be hard on yourself at all. I think if you are, you need to kind of look yourself in the mirror and just give yourself a bit of a slap in the face because it's just the wrong mindset to have. You know, this is, this is we're going for a difficult time. You might think it's easy for you, but you know, with the external factors going on, um, there's a lot of things probably going on in your subconscious that you're not aware of that could be having a bit of an effect on your day, I think anyway. So be enormously kind to yourself, have a laugh with yourself. And I think that kind of sums it up really, mate, for me anyway, like that's what I do, you know, set myself targets, being quite stoic about everything. Um, and yeah, and just, and just giving to people, you know what I mean? Like giving, like, I don't know about you, but I get more of a kick out of helping people and giving my knowledge to people than I do actually receiving it. Yeah. I love listening to people and adopting their ideas and putting it to practice for myself. And then maybe, uh, you know, trying to, um, what's the correct word? Not progress it, but like, I guess adapt it to, to like way I, I would do it. Uh -huh. So I love that sort of stuff, but I get a massive harm in giving out information than just helping people and making people realize, well, maybe do it this way instead. It's like I was thinking to someone recently about, you know, past experiences. And I was like, well, think about this. Like, do you remember when you're in school and you're going through a certain time of school, maybe it's bullying, or maybe it's like you're really stressed of a part a girlfriend or a boyfriend you had. Do you even think about the person anymore? No, you don't. Because you've now got more, you know, relatable things going on in today's world. So often what you're going through now is a stressful situation. It's not going to actually be a worry for you in five years' time. So, you know, don't try to kind of like, make it this massive thing in your head like understand sometimes it's actually good to just you know for a minute pause take stuff out of the equation and go what am i actually getting really worried about here is it really necessary is this really helping me because yeah. worrying then is just worrying about something that's going to happen in the future and depressions but about something like in the past so think about being completely present is going to be a big difference i'm waffling on now i can tell but um but yeah mate that's pretty much I think, I think waffling whatever you're doing is I think it's it's all it's all knowledge that people are gonna you know <laughs> sometimes you might think that you like you might want to say something but you might go nah you probably won't probably won't you know <laughs> that in. and actually you you know you say it and they're like oh that that's that's actually really that's actually a really good idea so you know people with the stoicism keep them present people then might google these things and start to yeah. like how what what has been present, you know, um, and then what about like uh, do you do you do any meditation or anything like that to then stay present? Do you do some meditation? I do a lot. I don't do as much now, but I try to get in only five or ten minutes. I, I I completely fall into that. Like I don't do as much as what I probably I should do, but it's what I can do in the day at the moment. So I only do about five minutes. But for me, like like I said, five minutes absolutely thirty five minutes in a week. It's better yeah. than me doing like 10 minutes here, 20 minutes there. So this is on a daily basis. I mean, I was doing up to an hour in the summer um, when I was back home in Devon. I mean, I was still working and teaching stuff online, but we had like kind of long periods. And so I was doing up to an hour of meditation a day there. And that was really quite something. 
yeah. to kind of do. Um, it, it took a massive focus to do it. Yeah. But I'll just kind of use it. I kind of, I was kind of hitting two birds with one stone. So what I'll do is I'll meditate in the sun. So I'll just be baking in the, in the sun, <laughs> getting a tan, not white now like I am now, like white as a ghost, and just be like meditating at the same time. So I was getting like one benefit from the mind and one benefit from the skin. So it's quite good. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, meditation is yeah. I think I think because it's free, people are like, nah, it's nothing. Meditation is nothing. But and people think that medit people meditate and they and when they first do it, they kind of and I'm not not med I'm not a meditating expert like that, but from what I've listened to and read and stuff, you know, people do it and their mind is just like a traffic jam full of like negative thoughts, positive thoughts, and these ideas are bouncing around their heads. And people are like, well, I'm not achieving meditation here at all. When actually, in fact, that is meditation. You're meant to just let these thoughts be completely crammed up, crammed up in your head, right? And then the more you do it, the traffic jam starts to get a little bit flexible. And eventually the cars, there's no traffic jam, the cars just flowing past your head. Yeah. And you, you kind of find yourself one car, which now is a thought, will obviously stay in your head for a little bit. And instead of it, you know, instead of you trying to get rid of it like this, you kind of let, let it fed, like fester in your head a little bit. Yeah. Um, and for me, like if I get like a thought about anxiety, for example, which I rarely get at the moment, but if when I was going through kind of that phase, instead of me trying to bury it, I'll just kind of be with it. And I'll be like, right, what am I, what am I getting worried about? And this is what I'll do. I'll be like, what am I worrying about right now? So I'll be worrying about this. And then I'll be like, all right, now what's the emotional connection with that? So I'll feel it in my stomach. And I'll be like, okay, this is what I'm feeling in my stomach. I can feel it right up here underneath my chest. I can feel it. it's quite a strong kind of feeling. And by the time like, I've kind of um, processed it, the anxiety thought's kind of gone. Mm -hmm. So instead of me trying to bury it, which a lot of people try to do, they bury the negative emotions. I love to kind of feel it for what it is because life is, a, I mean, the roller coaster ride. I mean, I want to feel those downs and negatives and depression thoughts I kind of you know I don't love it but it's good to kind of feel them I rather, I rather feel like this sometimes and then like this than just that the whole way you know what I mean because yeah. without, without depression and without sadness then when you're happy and stuff it's going to feel nowhere better you know what I mean so I'm a massive believer in that and that's why when you suck in a race like and you do really bad like as much as I hate it and don't like it I do like to search for them and, and actually get into them and never give up in them because like i said in the previous podcast i learned so much from it and actually it allows men to kind of go back to the drawing board get back on the horse the very next day get back to work and then search for that high which is going to be running pb or winning a race so, yeah yeah brilliant and then is there any books that you <clears throat> recommend so you, you spoke about atomic habits is there any other books that you'd recommend for uh yeah like uh chimp paradox yeah, yeah a, lot, a lot of them that one um this one here i'm currently reading uh the subtle art of not giving a fuck sorry my french yeah, yeah i haven't read that one yet. i'm halfway through it but it's pretty good yeah uh, that's a good book um i don't i don't really ever read like fictional books or anything like that it's always just kind of psychology books um uh yeah i think that's it for now sapiens is a good book if that's kind of thinking away from psychology and stuff that's more like just about our ancestors and stuff which is quite cool that talks about all the tribes and why we're kind of fixated on being in the tribe you know what i mean so and that that's kind of still registered in our dna today yeah. so that's quite cool and yeah so that, i think i think yeah chimp paradox is a great one atomic habits is a really good one yeah. um oh um passion paradox by uh steve magnus right you read that one no no it's on my it's on my it's on my list yeah that's a good one that, that mentions about passion uh, passion is refers to passion which is then means suffering yeah. that's a really good book and uh, peak performance by steve magnus as well Right. Um, it's a really good book if you're very into kind of the training philosophy yeah, yeah. about different runners and yeah it's pretty good yeah that kind of teaches you the first half is all very sciencey and then the second half is all very how yeah. you put that science into, into practice what about yeah. have you have you read David Goggin's book no I think he's an absolute psycho that guy but I mean like in a good way like uh, I think I, I would David Goggin's man he is that is, this guy is mine's bulletproof. I know, it's, I've seen, I've heard some stories of him, and he's just absolutely nuts. Yeah. Like, so, like, I've got, I've got a few books down here. Look, the current one I'm reading just now is Cadell Evans, The Art of Cycling. Mm. Um, and I really like that because he was a guy that was always either second or third best in the Tour de France. Mm -hmm. He was always a bridesmaid, never the bride. And that was to, like, Lance Armstrong, that was to Alberto Contador, that was you know, to athletes who are starting to get popped for, for drugs. Mm. And he speaks about how 
you know, at some point, ignorance is bliss in sport. Yeah. Sometimes the less you know, the better. Because um, George Hin Hincapie, uh, Lance's um, basically lead out man, then became Cadell's lead out man. Yeah. Um, and Cadell would then ask him about like, oh, but you know, so and so, like he was, he was definitely clean, and George would be like, I wasn't, and he's just like, he's getting really demoralised. Um, the reason I think I'm on that is because when on Facebook, when every athletic or uh, sort of running uh, group posts or retweets, you know, another Kenyan or whoever busted for, I just. I don't really like seeing it, especially when I'm, see when you're not in the shape that you're supposed to be in, sometimes things can come into your brain, they can infiltrate it a wee bit, they can just like sneak mm -hmm. in just a wee bit and just take you out your, your flow. Um, when you're flying, you know, the bombs can be flying, the bullets can be flying, you just like, you know, stick the middle fingers up to it and go, right, you wrote, it's like, that's all right, it doesn't affect me, but sometimes when you're going through a really tough time and you're, you're hearing this, you're like, man, I'm struggling here and these guys are, you know, doing this, like, this is, like, but, um, I, you know, he's, he talks about, and he, he won one Tour de France um, in, I think, 2011, but he talks about, you know, how he aged as a human being, and when he got to 32, 35, how the process of recovery had to take over the training, um, it's a, he's, and he, he loved this the science and the numbers and things like that, being on the, the bike and getting his VO2 and stuff, so that's quite, I, I'm really enjoying Cadell Evans' book, um, mm -hmm. I like, uh, I, I know, it's, I don't know if, but all, basically all of Aunt Middleton's books I've really enjoyed. So First Man In, um, First Man In, and then there's also Zero Negativity, but there was also another one, um, I've got it in Audible as well, uh, that'll get up for us. Kevin Hart, Can't Make This Up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I swear to God, like see for, he used, it's not like a, co it's not like a comedy, like in terms of he's always trying to make you laugh. Mm -hmm. He tries to show you that everything that we are going through is setting us up for something that we're about to go through as well. Interesting. So um, I don't obviously don't want to give too much of it away, but it's there's some parts where you're like, I was crying with laughter um, with his relationship with his dad, <laughs> but how his mum would make him go from like, say, uh, swimming practice in the morning to school to then after school clubs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then he, he then said, well, you know, I was I was cussing her out. I say, no, my mum's a tyrant. She's, you know, she's always making me, like all these other kids are, you know, going out to cycling their BMX on the streets and stuff. But then some of those kids actually didn't see 12, 13 years old because they get shot. Um, and then when he became, you know, this movie star comedian, he's then, he's got interviews, he's got podcasts, he's got a radio talk, he's got to go and do his movie set. And he's got, to, like, he's got to go to the gym. And what's happening? His mum set him up as a kid for later in life. So, like, that that was a really good book. I've also got on here Mark Manson, Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And also his second book is called Everything is Fucked, a book about hope. And it's a really cool book on perspective and how this world is starting to, um, basically how this world is starting to move in terms of how we can we can't not keep searching as human beings. We need to keep, a, we need to keep, you know, uh, like with technology, basically. And he talks about like AI and how AI, when when we don't use it properly, can go back, can come back to bite us in the butt because supposedly like uh, AI technology, uh, they, they set this thing up with a, a, the grandmaster uh, chess player who's never been beaten like sort of 25 years. They got the IMB, uh, or IBM uh, computer, put the AI software in it, very basic one, got it to learn chess in two days and beat the grand chess master in two days, learned all the chess moves, all the possible. So mm -hmm. he was talking about how it just, you just need to be like being careful with how the evolution of the world's working. And then also because basically like what we're talking about with society, society is making us, marketing and consumerism is making us always go towards comfort, i.e. or i.e. You, you get you get the iPhone. Apple are brainwashing us to say as soon as you get the iPhone or the MacBook or anything Apple, your life will be complete. You will be happier in this life with your Apple. But really, 
you look, you go through it, you know, or you go, oh, look, the camera's amazing. Oh, look at the 12 mic. And then five minutes later, it texts, it phones, it's got apps, WhatsApps, takes pictures, does FaceTime, like every other phone. The high comes back down. Whether it's a car, you sit in the car, and then eventually that warm, fuzzy feeling fades away. You do up your kitchen, you do up your bathroom. And again, it's called the 710 rule, where we try and chase the 10 out of 10, but then eventually after a, you know, a couple of weeks or a couple of a months, you'll ask us again how we're doing, and the average will be 7 out of 10. Um, lost my train of thought. That's it. We, we're, always, we're always chasing that high, yep. and that we are always going towards comforts. We're always trying to be comfortable. So then when we're trying to chase comfort and we go through suffering, it becomes even more debilitating because we have been sold comfort all the time. We've been sold when you have this in your life or when you, when you have a car or you have a nice house or you, it, it, your life should be better. But it's just, life's your life. Mm -hmm. You're going to get hit with a few Mike Tyson punches here and there, whether you're in a big Mac mansion or you've got an iPhone or you've got a Nokia, you've got a Samsung or you've got a, t like, whatever it is. But as we keep chasing comfort and consumerism and marketing keeps telling us to keep going towards comfort, the more we actually, the more pain we feel during suffering because we are, we are being sold that if your life is, if you're going through suffering in life, that's bad. But really, it's suffering different. is growth. Mm -hmm. And Mark Manson talks about that sort of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. How I've got away from, you know, how, always trying to get these comforts in life. But as we get these more comforts in life, mental health is on the rise. Um, like a, a poor mental, mental wellness is on the rise but yet we've got besides covid besides covid we have this has been a massive pandemic this has shook the world but before this this world was in the best state it's ever been in mm -hmm. but mental health was in the worst state it's ever been in because we've got less shit to worry about like really properly worry about until this happened so you know if people want to you know put this on youtube or whatever and they want to start jumping to me and so like until this happened, we were in the best position as a, like the most entitled, the most like whatever. We had uh, we have everything, we had everything. It was going so well, but mental health was on the rise. Why? Because we're we're caring, we're caring about meaningless shit. We're caring about the colour of our couch, what type of blue, mm -hmm. you know, what type of grey, what type of white, what type, you know, what colour will my iPhone be? Should I get the white one? Should I get the gold one? Should I get the military, the green one? Or should I get the black one? Oh, I don't know the choices. It was like, as we fell into having, it's again, going back to everybody wants it till they get it. All these choices, we then become par paralyzed by analysis. And this, and I'm probably, yeah, I'm talking about it. Like I, I absolutely love this book, resonates with my mindset 110%. And, yeah, so I don't, I don't want to give any more away, but I really love that one. Um, and then meditation, you know, I would love uh, meditation. I meditate once every week. I can't, like, because if I try and fit it in every day, I'll get stressed. So then I just put it in where I feel I can put it in sort of thing, because I'm like you with a, I can't watch a movie. Like, see a, see a, see a Netflix movie or an Amazon movie or whatever movie, I can't finish it. Takes about three days to finish the movie. Sure. Because I watch it for 20 minutes. I get up. Well, I need to... edit the game, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It takes me about three days to get through a 90 minute movie just because I would rather watch an episode or something that's 30 minutes long. So it means that then it just, it, it's done, right? I've, I've had my wee fix of sort of TV and downtime, right? On the bike, run, programs catch-ups, podcasts, calls, classes, got to get it done. Mm. So, you know, it's meditation for me. Like I try and put it in once, once a week. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should start doing the sort of five five minutes every day. That might yeah. be a bit better. Yeah, yeah it's, like, just, it's, done like that. it's done like that. So. Yeah, and you're absolutely right with the whole, your mind's kind of like a car crash in there. Boom, 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 boom. But it's like um, when we sort of take it, if we go with uh, somebody who's never ran before, like running's hard to start with. Yoga, when people start yoga, they're just like, I can't really feel this because I'm too, in, like, they're too inflexible, so they can't really feel what it's supposed to be working. It's kind of like the same as that. Like you've got to give it time. You've really got to give your body and mind some time to adapt to these new stimuluses or lack of stimuluses. 
to you know like you're saying allow that mind uh, the, the 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 thought to come in like a cloud analyze it where's it coming from why is it came in and then let it move out like i think that's a great thing like analyzing it like a like traffic jam because all our minds and i think that's why we hang on to these devices when there's downtime because our, we have to keep filling we need to keep we need to keep our minds constantly ticking because mm. we we can't have any downtime we can't have any alone time so because when we do our thoughts go a bit crazy and i think a lot of people nowadays some people don't want to be left alone with their thoughts because mm. they're maybe in a, a bit of a bad place is that yeah. would, you, would you agree maybe agree with that one no definitely definitely yeah i absolutely agree you, you yeah. use the distraction to to yeah. put about what you're thinking and in the end in the end it just makes whatever that thought is louder and more dangerous in your head and so yeah i mean that's just key it is absolutely key to be with your emotions and i think that's why i've got such a good emotional connection yeah. um, with my head and how i feel about things and that's why i think stoicism has been a big thing for me and i feel like i've almost falling in i've fallen into it rather than actually me discovering it and you know trying to like get into it i've kind of just naturally fallen into it and gone why am i like this why am i thinking like this way yeah and said to me you're quite stoic like you don't really let things ever bother you and i'm not like, phase you and i'm like yeah it's interesting that and then he said to me google google search it yeah. I, was like, yeah, I guess i am like i said to you in the probably in the last podcast like nothing really phases me anymore unless it was like at knife point i think i'd be like okay like, this is pretty scary but to that sort of point i'm just i got to the point now at 27 i've gone through some experiences and probably like a little bit of trauma on the side of it as well and i'm you just manage it and then it's just now i'm just yeah like i feel like and i said in the previous part like, i'm the happiest i've ever been mm-hmm. in terms of you know where i'm at and you know in terms of career wise and athletics wise and where i'm at i feel i'm in a good place so i'm at, i've got quite a good stability at the moment yeah. and obviously things can change on it and in this in this age at the moment it could reoccur whatever whatever time but I think yeah in terms of that and i'm very happy and also just i feel as if anyone if anyone wants to throw a challenge at me well, i could handle it you know any conversation any problem any issue i could be like all right I'll give me a little bit of time and i'll be able to go through it and put what i think is the best idea to, to, to tackle it yeah. so i think when you get to that sort of degree of calmness in your mind which comes from meditation it comes from stoicism it's quite a, it's quite a refreshing sort of way to look at things and it's yeah. really cool. Like I just don't, I don't get worried about things. I don't get anxious about things. I don't really, nothing bothers me. <laughs> it takes a lot. Like, and even when my mom got, even when my mom gave me that call, like, yeah, like you know, I've got cancer, and that was, and that was on the phone because I couldn't go home for it. And it was, and my mom just wanted me to be there for her, and that was hard. And we couldn't go home because of COVID and stuff. Um, and we spoke every single day, a text every day, like, I love you loads and all this, and here for you, whatever. And, she got through it and you know she went for radiotherapy and it got all done and it's pretty much you know she's fine and that was very much she adopted the kind of like that very calmness and straight away she was the first person to say like right you find the silver lining right now like your mum's your mum's gonna be fine i'm at power walking right now as we speak and i'm like you are not <laughs> that's the way she is i mean i'm the old man just like working 12 hour days still 65 years of age and then he goes home takes, you know, takes care of my mum yeah. like a blue collar mentality which just drilled into me yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, and I love it. I love being, I love telling people, like, I come from this background. Yeah. Like, because it's made me who I am today. And I think that's had a big impact on why I am the way I am. And that's why, you know, in a, you know, we're talking about fighting this stuff. Like, of course, like, I'm, the fight's going to be the last resort. I'm not talking about that kind of sort of like phase. And I will stick up for myself, as you would for yourself. But just in terms of being able to fight through things in life, yeah. it would take a, something big to make me go, right, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I think when someone so important in your life is faced with death like that, yeah. as the C word, and it's your own mum, you're the person who's just brought you up from from the get go, and you, that kind of thought of like I could lose her, and that's a scary goddamn thing. And everything else is going through your life gets put on pause, and then everything that's important to your life goes zoop, right up. Yeah. Um, even with running and stuff, it kind of put it on pause. I still train and stuff, but the importance of it just kind of just went straight down. Um, yeah. And so my mom's kind of, my, even my mom's, you know, like she just says, I wake up every morning now feeling so grateful and happy. Yeah. How many people wake up healthy, happy, and um, healthy and just not happy? Do you know what I mean? So when you're, I think sometimes people need to 
the um, need to go through suffering to actually, you know, realize actually they're, they're actually doing all right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you're going for an injury, Sean, but like, and you're getting back to your best, but there's probably a lot worse things that could be going on in your life right now that have well, a bigger effect. Yeah, well, that's, so, you know, um, I've been there as well, mate, when I was down in London. My yeah, was dad, wasn't it? My dad was getting fed for yeah. But my mum yeah. and dad never told me because I thought I wouldn't be able to handle it, but went back up the road um, and I, I saw it and my dad looked as if, you know, you pop a balloon and he, like that wrinkly way. And I was just like, yeah. Jeez, like wow, you know, this is this is unbelievable. Like, yeah. um, but I get like, you, like you things. This is where people people do need to gain possibly like health no, not, yeah. perspective. Yeah. Like, people think that they're going to be around forever, and they're not. And we all think that we're going to live till we're hundred, and we're not. And the day when the doctor goes. Or after eating, you know, Burger Kings or McDonald's or KFCs or Pizza Huts or takeaways, or and you go, oh, by the way, you've uh, got coronary heart disease, mm. or you've got, you know, you've you've got calcification, or you're in the like, <gasps> what? Mm. Like, what? You know, what did you expect from living a life that was wasn't healthy? Like, do, do, do you not understand there's consequences and repercussions, good and bad, to every action? Mm. So, like, we get back to self-awareness. A lot yeah, of people yeah. aren't self-aware of themselves anymore. They don't understand what they're doing. They don't understand why they're doing something either. When you ask them, why are you doing that? I don't know. And I'll actually go, well, I believe you. I believe you don't know what you're doing. Because we're, we're kind of just, like, on a convert. Some people are on a convert about just yeah, yeah. head down and just zipping through life. Yeah. And That's then scary as well. And what happens is things like that give you a shake, give you a yeah. real bloody shake. But hopefully when it is happening to the person, it's never too late. But yeah. nowadays in our society, I think in our stubbornness and our, a lot of people think that they're always right. Mm. I think that it is, I think you can tell people um, and give them advice and your, your advice from your expertise till you're blue in the face. And some people just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And keep paying off until it becomes catastrophic. Mm. Um, in this day and age, I feel that people, it's almost like they need to be shocked before the pain pleasure scale and their life flips and they decide to take action. And so hopefully it's never too late, but sometimes I think people do take action when it is too late. But mate, we have spent an absolute minute on this podcast. So I'm going to... That's flow state, man. That's flow state. Time flies to in flow. <laughs> I'm going to say thank you so much for coming on today and spending time with myself, the listeners, again, giving us a lot of diamonds to, to take away, a lot of gold nuggets to take away and harness and put into their life and put into practice. Um, awesome. And yeah, mate, like it's an absolute pleasure again. Mate, hey, also to you, man, like we need to do this more often. Not me, not a podcast, but somebody's catch up like this. It's good. Yeah, yeah absolutely, mate. Yeah. You take care and I'll see you yeah. soon. Yeah, mate, take it easy.